Shout out to Tokyo Tree and to Kuriko for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone, it's time to make some changes. Also, I'm still recovering from being sick, so I still sound kind of sick. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about the channel and my relationship with it. And after a lot of contemplating, I've decided that I need to make some changes. Some of these are fun changes, and some of these are possibly not so fun changes. This video is going to be kind of split into two parts. In the first part, I'll be sharing the process for updating all my channel art, like my intro, banner, end screen, and so on. I will also be making some overlay screens for streaming, and we'll talk more about that later. In the second portion of the video, I'll be drawing a new profile icon, and also talking about the channel and the changes that I feel need to be made. So enough exposition, let's jump into it. To start, I'm going to be making a specific color palette for the channel. For many years, it has been teal and pink. I thought about stepping away from this color palette, but I still really like the color combo, and I feel like it fits me, so I'm sticking with it. However, instead of having a ballpark estimate as to what teal and pink I use for the channel, I want to have specific colors. To help me find the specific teal and pink I wanted, I used the website Coolers. On there, I also found this gradient maker. I played around with it for a bit and made a gradient using the channel's colors. I think it's really pretty. Uh, anyways, once I had found the specific teal and pink I wanted, I made a color board in Milanote so that I can easily have access to all the colors whenever I need them. I copy and paste in the hex codes to make the swatches the exact colors. I talked about Milano in this video and this video, uh, so you can check those out if you want to know more about it. Oh, and I brought in yellow and brown as kind of accent colors, and this is the final color scheme I ended up with. Next was making a logo for the channel. This is a rough concept I made in Canva. I liked the idea of making the number 2 stand out from the rest of the channel's name, and also putting a heart around it. Since I love to draw manga, and hearts are often representative of love. It might be kind of cheesy, but I like it, and I'm a cheesy person, so it works. <laughs> I drew my own heart asset to use for the logo. I also made my own number 2, however, I ended up not using it and just used a font instead. So I go back into Canva and bring in my assets. If you don't know what Canva is, it's kind of a thing that helps you make like visuals and stuff. I have a free trial right now and there's a lot of fonts I can use and stuff, so I figured I'd use it for making the logo. Uh, so I placed the assets and played around with things a bit and ended up with this. Now I didn't hate this, but it felt like it was missing a kind of artsy element. So I started going through all the different fonts. And I did this for a very long time, <laughs> like way too long. Eventually, I found this one. I liked this font since it has a bit of a texture to it and has an artsy feel. After even more finagling with details for way too long, I ended up with the final logo. I kept wanting to use colored text, but decided to go with black as it helps the logo have good contrast. Next was making a new pattern that I used throughout the channel's art. For a long time, I've used this argyle pattern I do like the Argyle, so I wanted something with a kind of similar feel. I found these brushes on the asset library that makes hearts with a subtle Argyle pattern. If you want to get an idea for how I'm making this pattern, I explain it in this video. At first I tried to pattern with just the hearts, but this felt a bit busy, so I tried adding some smaller shapes on the sides of the pattern. I made these shapes be sparkle-like shapes and stars. I felt like these smaller shapes helped break up the pattern and keep it from feeling too busy. And I feel like it overall looks really cute. Next is updating my banner. I don't remember where I found it, but I have this guide that I use for making my channel banner. Also, the only reason it needs to be this big is because I guess on TV, YouTube makes your banner very large. Uh, but my template could possibly be outdated at this point. But it still seems to work. I decided to keep the banner very simple. I bring in my pattern and also my new logo. However, I wasn't vibing with the pattern for the banner, so I instead brought in that gradient I made earlier using my channel's colors, and I felt like this was cute, so I kept it. I instead used the pattern for the remaining area that probably, like, no one is going to see. <laughs> Let me know, do you watch YouTube on the TV, and do you ever go on channels on the TV? I'm curious. Also, I made a new intro. I wanted the text to kind of appear in a way almost like it was being drawn out. 
to do this, I'm using a mask in Premiere Pro and I go frame by frame and make the mask show more of the logo as it moves along. I split the logo into two parts. So you'll see the black font first and then once it's all written out, the two of the heart and the other text will fade in. A part of me always wants to make a fancy animated logo with like music and stuff. But when I did have longer intros in the past, my analytics often showed that many people were skipping it, so I just don't bother with longer intros anymore. Next is making the stream assets. First is the starting soon screen and the be right back screen. I'm going to have this loosely based on my computer setup. Last year, I made a mini series on me making my own VTuber model. I also expressed I wanted to try live streaming in the near future, and I do still want to try live streaming, it's just whenever I would think about possibly doing so, I would remember that I wanted to have stream overlay screens, and I would never get around to making them. Uh, so yeah, now I am making them. I used 3D models for the keyboard and speakers since I did not feel like drawing those. Also, to help the scene feel more cute, I made the desk and tablet be a muted purple instead of black. I felt like the black would be a bit too harsh, so by leaning it more towards a purple, I felt like this would help achieve a softer look. For inside the screen, I added a teal and pink window, and inside of it, I'll put different text for the different screens. And this is what they ended up looking like. I added little dots, kind of like a loading animation, to help indicate that the screen is not like frozen or something. Now we are onto the overlay screen, and this one was a lot of fun to make. For my overlay, I need an area to show the art, space for my model, social media, and space to display details like what I'm drawing and what program I'm using. I thought about having there be an area to show the chat, but after a lot of thought, I feel like I'd prefer to not have the chat be in the screen. I'll instead make sure to read out the chat and any questions while I'm on stream. I'm always paranoid that maybe someone will say something inappropriate in the chat, and then that will forever be in the live stream footage. So I just prefer not having the chat be in the stream. Also, question of people that stream, how do you go about finding people to be mods for your streams? And how do you make people be mods for your streams? I'm most likely going to stream on YouTube. And yeah, I'm not sure how the whole mod thing works. Uh, so if you do, please let me know. Also, yes, I did edit all the social media icons so that they match the color scheme. <laughs> I actually feel like it looks really cute. Oh, and I edited this asset from VTube Studio. There is this tablet that's available in blue and yellow, but I wanted it in pink. So I just selected the areas and used a correction layer to change the color. I save the file in the same folder as the other VTube Studio assets so that I'm able to load this in with my model. I did the same thing with the chair, except I used a teal gradient map. So now the assets match my color scheme. So here is my stream overlay screen. I kind of went into it feeling kind of confused as to what I was going to do, uh, but I'm actually really happy with it. Lastly, I'll be drawing my new profile icon, but before jumping into that, I want to thank Tokyo Treat and Sakurako for sponsoring this video. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako invite everyone to experience Japan from the comfort of your own homes through their snack boxes. Tokyo Treat is a monthly fun and exclusive Japanese snack box featuring unique and seasonal flavors from all around Japan. Each box is filled with a variety of up to 20 fun and exclusive Japanese snacks that are only available for a limited time. Sakurako is a monthly Japanese artisan snack box that supports local Japanese snack makers. Each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. Both boxes come with a booklet that allows you to learn more about the snacks you receive, as well as allergen information. They also contain a wealth of information about Japanese culture. This time around, Tokyo Treat's theme is Moonfest Spectacular. Japan's lunar party Tsukimi is almost here. Tsukimi, or moon viewing, is all about having a blast with family and enjoying delicious seasonal treats. Dive into the fun and savor all the tasty Tsukimi-inspired snacks like Kit Kat Matcha, Golden Moon Senbai, Banana Castella, and many more. Two of my favorite snacks from this box are the Cream Colon Lemon Flavor and Crunky Cookie Ball. These crispy and creamy layered treats have a mellow lemon flavor and are so yummy. Rich chocolate on the outside and crisp cookie on the inside, these make for the perfect snack pairing. Next is Sakurako's theme of Autumn Moon Festival. This month, Sakurako invites you to capture the essence of Tsukimi and indulge in its authentic and savory flavors. Enjoy both rich and authentic snacks like Tsukimi Mikan Cream Cookie, Yusagi Huizui, Kokuto Kinako Mochi, and many more. 
all pairs perfectly with the special Tsukimi Rui Kacha Tea. Also, this month's table item is the Tsukimi dish plate, and it is so adorable. My two favorite snacks from this box are the lemon baked chocolate and custard taiyaki. This baked chocolate is made using domestically cultivated lemons. It has a subtly sweet citrus flavor and light crispy texture that melts in your mouth. These are just adorable and so very yummy. I love the custard filling on the inside. These boxes are always a special treat and make great gifts. If you want to check them out for yourself, you can use my code DRAWMANGA to get $5 off your first box. There are links in the description and pinned comment down below. Thank you so much again to Tokyo Treat and Sakuriko for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to drawing. So now we are on to drawing an updated profile picture that I'll use for all my social media. It's a bit funny because not that long ago I said in a video that I still didn't mind my current profile picture. However, ever since I said that in the video, I've had this urge to make a new profile picture. Like I kept looking at it and being like, hmm, maybe I do want to update it. <laughs> my profile pictures over the years have most often been myself drawn in my style. For my last icon, I drew my facial proportions in a more mature looking way and went with a front view pose. This time around, I'm going to draw myself more how I draw a lot of my characters. I want my icon to be more representative of how I draw a lot of my characters. I'll also have it be in three quarter view and it's very zoomed in on the face. Like I mentioned at the start of this video, we'll be talking about fun changes coming to the channel and also maybe some not so fun changes coming to the channel. So I've been posting every Saturday on this channel since 2016, so about eight years. It's been a very consistent schedule and I rarely miss uploads. For the past handful of years, I've taken some weeks off in January to help me prep for the coming year. However, this is the longest break for posting I usually give myself in a year. I'm the type of person that is very rule bound and I like to stick with schedules. I do not like going off schedule. And while I do like posting every week, this year I have felt like I've been having a harder and harder time keeping up with it. I feel like I'm always on a hamster wheel and I just can't catch up. And this feeling of always chasing my tail has been really cutting into my creativity and my feeling of wanting to create. I've been consistently in a sort of burnt out feeling and I feel like I can't keep this up. And so for me and for the channel, I'm deciding that each month I'll have one week that I do not post. I'm going to refer to this as my float week. My float week will be a week that I use to catch up on other work, work on personal projects, make content for social media, and so on. It's also a week I can use for something like if my husband and I go on a trip. Whenever we go on a trip, I have to work really hard to make content in advance that can go up while we are gone. And this is always very tiring. However, if I have a week where I'm not posting a video, this can help lighten the load. And you might be thinking, Becca, why not just take a week off when you're feeling burnt out or tired? We would understand. And like I mentioned, I'm a very rule-bound person and I don't like going off schedule unless it's absolutely needed. If I'm feeling tired, I just tell myself to suck it up and keep going. But also another factor is sponsorships. I am often booking sponsorships a month or two in advance and there will be months where every Saturday a video has a sponsor, so skipping an upload is not an option. However, by having float weeks pre-scheduled, this will be a reminder to me to not schedule a sponsor that week. Uh, so yeah. My plan is to not post the last Saturday of each month. However, if needed, I will move the float week. I will post an upload schedule at the start of each month on my social media and community tab so that you all know when to expect videos. So yeah, I'm no longer going to be posting every Saturday, but I feel like adding in this flexibility will be very beneficial for me and hopefully the channel. Another reason I wanted to add this float week is because sometimes there is a video project I want to work on, but the project is too big and I would not be able to get it done within my normal filming time. The only way I can usually finish large projects is to work on them while also working on another video. So I have to double up on work and this is always kind of hard to do. But by having a week where I don't need to post, it gives more time to film if I want to. And like I mentioned earlier, I've also been wanting to get into streaming for a while now. But I can never find a good time to stream because I'm always working on videos. So my goal and hope is that for float weeks, I can stream on Fridays. 
Now you might be wondering, Becca, why wouldn't you stream on Saturday since you usually post on Saturday? And while Saturday is actually my day off because that's the day my husband has consistently off and that's the day we go to church. Uh, so Saturdays doesn't really work. However, Friday most likely would. So my schedule for September looks something like this. The 7th, 14th, and 21st will all have videos. The 28th will not have a video, but my hope is to stream on the 27th. The stream would most likely start around 5 p.m. Central Time. I notice a lot of streamers or the ones I watch often seem to stream in the morning or afternoon. However, I am not an early bird and I don't go to sleep until like 5 in the morning. So I feel like 5 p.m. would work best for me. For my first couple of streams, they are probably not going to be too long. I would aim for 2 hours or 3 max. It would be really chill and I'd probably just be sketching and chatting. And I most likely would leave the streams up on the channel for people to watch in the future. So if you missed the stream, you can still watch it. A part of me is scared to break this schedule of posting every Saturday, but I feel like this change is a much needed one and will be for the best. It will allow for more flexibility and diversity within my work, and I feel like this is something I really need right now, and I hope you will stick with me through this change. Also, in upcoming videos, I may try to play around with my editing style a bit, especially for the intro. I always feel like I want to spice things up a bit, but I'm scared to do so. Uh, so I'm pre-telling you all, I'm going to be doing some experimenting with the content, uh, so be prepared for that. Uh, so to wrap up here, I'll talk a little bit about the art. You might have noticed throughout the process, my canvas turns into a circle. I achieve this illusion by coloring around the circle with the same color as my background. I like to see my art as a circle since that's how it'll most often appear online. Also, for the coloring, I really wanted to make the art pop. I always feel like my current icon doesn't really stand out much, so I wanted to try to change that. I also tried to add more color to the piece with the lighting. I have the lighting be more pink on one side and teal on the other. This brings in the channel colors even though the illustration is just a headshot. It does feel a little funny drawing myself more like my default characters. It makes me look much younger, but like I said, I want the art of the icon to better show off my usual art style, and I feel like my previous picture didn't really do that. So yeah, it feels a little weird, but I am happy with how the art turned out. And here is all the channel art I made in this video. I'll probably update everything sometime next week. I will give it a few days as to not spoil the video for people who don't watch the day the video comes out. Oh, I also just noticed I never showed you all the process for the end screen, uh, but you'll see it at the end of the video, so it's okay. <laughs> I want to say thank you to many of you for sticking with me and I'm looking forward to this change and the possibilities it brings. Like I said, I will post content schedules at the start of each month. So if you want to stay up to date, consider following me on Twitter or Instagram. Or I think if you turn on all notifications for my channel on YouTube, you'll get notified when I make a community post. Uh, so yeah, that's all for this video, and I want to say a big thank you to my super awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons. You are all super fantastic, and thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Oh, I guess I can't always say that for my outro now. Um, well, bye! <laughs>